Well, hi, welcome back. This is uh, Two Cherries Instruments again. We're here to start off a new build, and uh, I came across this really interesting technique for uh, drawing instruments. Uh, uh, and uh, I've taken some time to figure out how to do this in uh, Fusion 360. Um, it's really interesting, and uh, the way it works in Fusion is fantastic. So um, I actually created a playlist of the four circle videos by Kevin Kelly that are fantastic to watch. Go ahead, watch those. Um, and then I'm just using his techniques to uh, to draw these uh, violins here. So originally I planned to draw all four of these for you in this video. That seems to be a little bit uh, too much work there. So um, what I have here is a, the first one on the left here is an Andre Amade 1560 and then a Nicola Amade um, from 1683 and then the Stradivari. Um, which is 1708, and then Guarneri, which is 1737. Um, I've decided that I'm going to build the Guarneri here, and I'm going to completely model this entire instrument. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm trying to make a replica of this. I'm not, um, but I'm using his model as a basis for uh, my build. And uh, we're, we're certainly going to be using modern building techniques. We're going to be using the CNC machine, um, but we're going to end up with an instrument uh, very similar in form to this one. So um, uh, here's this sketch that I did to draw this body shape. And uh, now I'm going to show you how we got so there. So the way this works is that every circle that forms a part of this arc um, on the profile of this instrument is proportional to a single circle. So what I've done here is I've taken the uh, an image of the instrument we're going to model and I've scaled this to um, I scaled the canvas to the actual size of the instrument so then I've made this center line here that runs as close as I can possibly get it to run through the center points of the instrument here and so we're going to draw a circle we need the first circle to make everything proportional to so um, I want this circle to be on the center line and here so so you can see that it's not quite this image is not totally square so I'm just going to be using this right side of the Im image here to to uh, model it then I'll mirror it across the other side um, thereby eliminating any error so as you can see it lines up perfectly here on this side but there's some camera distortion from from the other side so we'll just use this right side um, now I've already drawn this so I already know that the dimension that I that I want for everything is going to be uh, 7.5 so I've got 7.54 here but I'm just gonna change that to 7.5 um, really to achieve that that number um, you you kind of have to like draw everything out and then come back and then change the proportions and I'll show you how that works um, so we've got our basic circle every single arc in this drawing is going to be proportional essentially proportional to this circle so we are going to first off we want to make our sieve offset right here so we're gonna offset this line right here and it's going to be so we get a dimension here and we're gonna set this dimension to the lower bout circle divided by four so one fourth and you can see it just lines up beautifully it's almost as if it was intended to be that way uh, because it <laughs> probably was so we're gonna draw um, two more circles we're gonna draw an upper bout circle here I'm just gonna sketch this in and then I'm gonna draw another circle over here um, then we're going to create dimensions for those. So the upper bout was four fifths of the lower bout, which is 0.8. And it lines up really beautifully. Um, now to set this point here in space, we're first going to get have to get the C bout in there. And uh, the C bout is five sixths of the lower of the lower bout. So let's draw that one in. There we go. Now the constraints are what really makes this nice in uh, Fusion 360. If you're drawing these by hand, you don't have this ability, but um, what we can do is we can make 
this C about circle tangent to the lower. Whoops. I want to lock that in there first. So let's lock this down to this right here. And then we'll make the C about tangent to the lower bout. And we'll also make it tangent to this one. And then we can make the upper bout tangent to that one. So see how that really nicely locks in all of those. The next thing I want to do is I want to put in the point circle here that's going to define the edge point of uh, these circles here. And like all of the rest of them, um, it is proportional. So the, uh, the point circle is uh, also 5 6. So we'll just draw a circle in here. We'll dimension it and make it point times point eight three three. So. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do in here is uh, finish out these arcs for the lower and upper bout. And for that, we draw the vesica Pisces. So we're just going to draw, take a, a line here that's parallel to this center point. We're going to draw that over and make it tangent to the uh, lower bout arc. Um, so it's not locked in there. So just to make this a little bit easier, this may backfire on me, but I'm just going to vertical, horizontal align that one to there, but there's no dimension yet. So we're going to take the dimension, and the dimension is going to be proportional to the lower bout. This was uh, clearly two-thirds, so 0.666. And that, yeah, that lines up really not a lot nicer. So we'll now we'll do the same thing up here on the upper bout. Five six point eight three. So there we get those, and then uh, and then to finish out this final circle to go from from this point to here, um, we just create a circle that's based off the center line there. And if I can get right there like that, see how that just matches up perfectly. Do the same thing on the lower bout and get a really nice match on that one too so so we have to do the point lines next so they, they start from here and you can see that it lines up perfectly with the center point of the upper bout there um, on the lower bout it lines up perfectly with the center point of the, the lower bout vesica pisces uh, circle for the outside line, we need a line that comes from the Vesica Pisces circle to here, and we'll go from the center point of it out. Um, likewise here, we'll do the same thing. There we go. So now we have our point lines. So I'll just draw a line out. This makes it really easy for fusion, but um, I'll just draw a line out there. And I also have um, this line right here where it, where the point line intersects with the upper bout circle. So right there. Um, because I drew these across from points, they're, they're solid, but I need one of these to be not um, tied down so that I can put a dimension in there that I can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to dimension from here to lock that in, thereby giving me a dimension that's proportional to these circles around it. And then I can draw a circle here and I can dimension it based on that dimension. Um, and, but I want it to be um, radius, so I'm going to put in diameter, so I'm going to multiply by 2. So now to place that circle, so you can see it kind of fits in right there. What I want to do is I want to have 
the circle constrained um, by coincident to this point and by tangent to this point. And that locks that circle right in there and that, that arc fits really nice in there. So in order to get this lower one, this lower one is uh, proportional to the upper one at two thirds. So we'll just make another circle. This circle needs to be proportional to this one times six. There we go. So to lock that in, we're going to do the same thing as the previous one. This circle needs to be coincident to the point and tangent to the seabout arc. There we go. So that locks that in really nicely. Now we're going to do the same thing down here below. So first I'm going to draw a line from here. Then I'm going to draw another line right here where these intersect. Um, I have to delete this constraint so that I can get a dimension. Which locks that back in. I draw a circle. I dimension that circle based on this dimension times two. And then I place that circle. So let's, uh, just to make this easier, I'm gonna do the um, tangent first. So tangent to the lower bout circle and coincident to that point. Okay, that drew in nicely. Now, we're gonna draw one more circle. We're gonna set the dimension as proportional to the supper bout circle. Um, and we're gonna make that four fifths. So four fifths is 0.8. So the outside of this circle needs to be tangent to the seabout circle and coincident to the point. And there we go. So we have a, a totally locked in drawing of the profile of this instrument at this point. Um, you can go through and clean this all up, project it over to the other side. Um, one of the coolest things um, about this is that everything is proportional based on this lower bout. So if you wanna say, make this a little bit narrower, so you wanna go say 0.73 inches on the lower bout, it just brings everything in for you. Um, if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can. Um, now, there's there can be some limits in, into how far you can go with this because it does break at a certain point. But um, you know, you can you can really like scale this up or scale this down, um, and it just scales every part of it for you, which is really cool. If you want to make some minor adjustments, um, and that's how we get the profile. Um, up next, we're gonna do the f holes. And then we're gonna do the scroll um, all using the same technique. Um, I'm probably even gonna use this technique for the top arches, which I don't think uh, they really do. I'm not, I haven't seen anything based on that, but I'm gonna try to see um, how far I can push this technique and, and what I can do with it. So uh, definitely go check out those Kevin Kelly videos if you have any questions. If you wanna see me do, I know there's some differences in how this is done with different models. And if you want to see me do the rest of these, like, uh, yeah, definitely let me know. I, I can draw those out. And, and if you have any problems, uh, let me know. I, I'd like to see your comments. Uh, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.